Okay, here's a lesson where I show you two different ways to explode something in Blender. One is with cell fracture and one's using uh, explode modifier. Let me clarify here. When we use cell fracture to explode something, we'll be using a rigid body system. When we use the explode modifier, we'll be using a particle system and it's gonna be good to compare and contrast these two systems. Okay, rigid body systems and particle systems usually don't work together in 3D programs. In some, sometimes they do, like in Maya and particles and, uh, and, and rigid bodies do work together, but in Blender, I don't think they, they really do. Okay, before we even start, I wanna show the shader editor here. Um, the oval was, a, it is a green color, but if I drop a mix shader on it, I can use the factor to switch between shader A or shader B. Okay, but I'm gonna plug in this black and white wave texture into the factor attribute. And what that'll do is use the black and white image to separate color A and color B. Then I'll use this color ramp to increase the contrast. And the wave texture has a distortion attribute, which is gonna make this look a little bit more like a, a watermelon. Okay, before you use cell fracture, please make sure that you go to Blender's preferences and go to the add-on submenu, do a search for cell fracture, and just make sure it's checked. Once, once it's checked, you just have to close the preferences window and it'll be activated. Well, it'll be available to be activated. So I've got my watermelon or my mesh selected. No longer need the shader editor. I'm gonna to go to the object menu and underneath quick effects, cell fracture will now be available as the fifth option because we turned it on in the preferences. In the cell fracture attributes, there's a lot of options here. I'm gonna leave everything at default, okay? But I'm going to increase material from zero to one. Please take a look at my material menu here on the right side, and you'll see I've got a green material and a pink material. When you switch material to one, Blender will utilize material one on the outside of the geometry, and then for the interior volume, it'll use material two. And the reason is because in a series encoding, zero is always your first number. So the number one is actually your second number. And this just means that we'll be using two different materials. So let me just click okay. Blender's doing some calculations here. At the very top of the list of all these new meshes is the original sphere. Okay, I'm just gonna move this out of the way here and hide it. I'm going to select all the other meshes that were generated. By the way, the texture got a lot smaller because uh, each individual mesh got smaller. So the scale is affecting it. You can easily just switch back to your shader editor. And I'm just going to increase this. I'm going to decrease the scale and that makes it bigger. Okay, I've got all of these meshes selected. In the object menu, I'll make them all active rigid bodies. That means that they're susceptible to gravity and then they can collide with other rigid bodies. When I hit play, you'll see that these objects are indeed susceptible to gravity. Shift left arrow to rewind. However, uh, they're passing right through this plane. So to turn this plane into an active body, I'll go to the physics menu, kind of looks like a moon orbiting around a planet. I add this rigid body attribute and change it to passive. All right, nothing's really exploding yet, so let me rewind. While I've got all of these active bodies selected, I'm going to hit Shift A, and I'm gonna add a force field. Specifically, I'm gonna add something called a force. Let's hit GZ, drag it up a little bit. And inside the physics menu, I can see the force attributes. I'm gonna increase the strength, maybe 1000. Okay, that's gonna be pretty powerful. And when I hit play, boom, it explodes. Okay. Let's delete everything. And now I wanna show you guys 
how to do an explosion, not with the cell fracture, but with the explode modifier. And we'll be using a particle system. Okay, let's get that original sphere back. Let's make that texture a little, uh, I'll leave it as is. I think that'll be fine. Yeah, there's a scale attribute, okay. In order to get the explode modifier to work, you can't just add an explode modifier. First, you have to actually go to this menu here. I'm gonna nickname this the chicken foot. The real name is the physics menu, okay? This chicken foot menu allows you to add a particle system. I'm so sorry, it's not the physics menu, it's the particles system menu, okay? The physics menu looks like something orbiting around a planet. So I'm in the particle system menu. I added a particle system by hitting the plus sign. And now if you take a quick look at my modifier menu, there's a particle system modifier in here. All right. Uh, if I hit play, you'll see a bunch of particles coming out. At this point, I can add an explode modifier. And when I hit play, you'll see that this object is starting to break apart. So the explode modifier works when you have a particle when you have a particle system applied, and then these faces uh, inherit the attribute of particles, so they're susceptible to gravity. I'm going to go back over to the particle menu, and the number of particles is at 1,000. That's a lot. I'm going to look down in the lower right hand corner. I see that I have 513 faces. So that's the number of particles I want to use, one particle for each face. The end of this whole simulation is 200 frames, so I'm going to shorten this to 5. And now when I hit play, all of these particles fall. However, look at the, the orientation of all of the, the, the faces. They're all kind of facing the same way, so I'll check rotation, open up the rotation menu, and also check dynamic. Okay, inside of the velocity menu, I think it's also a good idea to, um, if we if we want to make it look like an explosion, I think you should increase normal from one to two, and then increase the randomization a little bit. Okay, then it looks like an explosion. Uh, what's going on with the plane though? They're just going right through. I'm going to select the plane, and as you can see. In the physics menu, it's it's a passive rigid body. Like I said earlier, though, uh, rigid body systems, right? This passive rigid body, they don't really work together. They're not compatible with particle systems. So these particles are ignoring the passive rigid body. Let me hit this X to get rid of the rigid body node. And instead, I'm going to create a collision node. All right, for particle systems, you can't use a passive rigid body as a ground plane. You've got to just create a plane and give it a collision node. Now that I've got a collision node, you'll see that nothing is, is penetrating through that plane. It's a little bit bouncy, so I'll increase damping, which slows everything down, and then I'll give it a little bit of friction so it doesn't slide so much. And of course, I'm going to make it a little stickier. OK, there we go. And there is an explosion using the explode modifier. If you don't want to take if you don't want to look at these particles uh, in the particle menu, I've got to select the actual uh, geometry here in the particle menu, go to viewport display, switch from render to none. OK, that was kind of a slow way to do it. Guys, uh, there's a faster way where you go to object and just use quick explode. And let me show you that process because it can be a little bit confusing when you first apply it if you're not sure what to do. I just deleted that explode modifier. I'm going to go back to the particle system and I'm going to hit minus to get rid of the particle system. This is now back to regular geometry. Okay, pretty easy to kind of remove all those modifiers and particle systems. 
you know what? I'm going to actually need that shader editor open, but let me show you what happens here. If I go to object, rigid body, and I'm sorry, quick effects, and I choose quick explode, it instantly applies a particle system with 100 uh, particles, and it instantly applies an explode modifier. However, there's some weird viewing going on here. And in order to fix that, you have to go into the material menu and switch these blend modes to opaque. All right, now it's going to respect the, it's actually going to respect, respect the normals or something, or, or just have it not have any transparent faces. Okay, if I hit rewind, it, it won't go back to the original oval shape. However, if I go to the particle menu, I'm sorry, if I go to the explode modifier and hit refresh, it will. Okay, and a lot of the settings are now automatically adjusted because we're using quick explode. So it's kind of like a, a canned preset and you can go in and make some adjustments there. So just wanted to mention that uh, if you do use quick explode and you have some viewing issues with the shader, just scroll down in your material menu and switch the blend mode to opaque. I wanted to show the manual way of applying a particle system yourself and then applying the explode modifier yourself. Because if you understand how to do it manually, when you use quick explode, if you run into any issues, then you can probably troubleshoot. Okay, there was a comparison between using cell fracture and the explode modifier. Please remember that using cell fracture is a rigid body system and the plane has to be a passive rigid body to collide with the pieces. If you're using an explode modifier, you're using a particle system and the plane has to have a collision. Uh, it has to have a collision node on it. All right, guys, try that on your own.